everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahee, and this is show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can find me on the Facebook group or on Twitter, and you can also respond to Day Spring Discussions on Gmail, dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. And remember, listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and now Patreon, guys. Well, happy Tuesday. It is a somewhat gloomy day here in Austin, Texas. Looks like it might rain, which is a great day to stay inside and catch up on all the media that I'm missing. I am behind on several shows. I got three episodes of Star Trek Discovery to watch. I think I'm three episodes behind on The Gifted, and I think I'm a couple episodes behind on DC's Legend of Tomorrow, so I got some stuff to watch, so I'm hoping that instead of going out and actually exercising like I was planning on doing, it just starts pouring down rain and gives me an excuse to stay inside and watch some TV, but we'll see how it goes, guys. Well, it is Tuesday, like I said. Before I get started on the main topic of today, there's something I really got to get off my chest, something that kind of bothered me yesterday, and I've talked about it with several people. And I just want to, you know, get it out there and see what you guys think about it. So, a couple days ago, Lisa and I did our review of Thor Ragnarok. And for the most part, I did not like the film. Although, from what I'm hearing, most critics and people who have seen the film really did like it. Now, yesterday, my co-worker and former co-host of this show, Josh, were talking about Thor Ragnarok. And he was talking about how... Everyone he's talked to has liked the film, and I'm one of those rare people that really didn't like the film. And I understand that. It's fine. People are entitled to their own opinions. That's great. That's the great thing about art, about cinema. Everyone has their own perspective. Cool. But something that's bugged me is that in this week's issue of Entertainment Weekly, they did a review of Thor Ragnarok and gave it a B, which is a fine score. B is really good for movie score. I got B's and I was ecstatic and I was ecstatic in school when I got B's. So B's are good, but I felt like the last part of it didn't fit with the score. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you the last couple of lines of the review from Entertainment Weekly. And it says, "Quote: Unfortunately, you don't care what happens from one scene to the next, but that's not the point. Ragnarok is designed as a joke delivery system, and on that score and that score alone, it works." And then you get a B rating at the very end there. To me, I'm a little confused because the words seem negative, yet the score is positive, a B. And it it just doesn't fit to me because when you look at those two lines, especially that first line, unfortunately, you don't care what happens from one scene to the next. If I don't care about what is happening, why am I watching the goddamn movie? Okay, if I don't care about these characters, why am I watching? Uh, Essentially what this critic or pundit is saying, that the whole film is just joke after joke, a joke delivery system, and we're just here for the next joke. We don't actually care about the characters, we're just waiting for the next joke to make us laugh. Marvel has always towed that line between action and comedy. I get it, that's fine. My problem with Thero Ragnarok is that it was too many jokes, that... The jokes did take me out of the film. It didn't make me care about the characters. That's what I'm saying is a bad thing. Whereas this punnant is saying that is a good thing. And I don't get that. The whole point of watching a movie is to tell a story. To get us into the characters. To care about these characters. And this guy is saying that not caring about what you're watching is a good thing. If I wanted jokes, I'd go to a comedy club and watch a comedian, okay? I'm there to hear a story. I'm there to get invested in the characters. I want drama. I don't get the review. I just don't. It's, to me, it seems like it's a negative, but he's putting it as a positive, which ugh, I'm not going to get into the semantics about our society and what that means about our intelligence and our president and all that stuff. I'm not going to do that. But to me, this article seems like a negative – even though people are looking at it as a positive, and it just confuses the hell out of me. Now, Thor Ragnarok is doing very well. It made $127 million domestically, over $400 million worldwide, so people really like the film, and that's fine to each his own. I have different opinions on it, but whatever. This is just something I had to get off my chest. What do you guys think about it? Hit me up. 
Gmail, Facebook group, Twitter. Let me know. Do you agree with me that this seems like a negative, even though they're coming off as a positive? What do you think about this quote? What do you think about Thor Ragnarok? Let me know, guys. All right, getting to the main story of today. Now, yesterday, kind of the movie industry was a little shook by some news. According to CNBC, a report came out yesterday that Walt Disney Company is in early talks to potentially purchase parts of 20th Century Fox, the parent company of Fox Television, along with FX Networks, all that stuff. So let me break this down a little bit, you know, deal for deal, and then we'll go over the details. So the deal, however, would not have encompassed Fox News or the Fox Broadcasting Network because a company is not legally allowed to own two broadcast networks, and Disney already owns ABC along with ESPN. So it wouldn't include the Fox Broadcast Network, Fox News, Fox Sports, all those Fox channels is what it would be. And also, if they did purchase it, there would be kind of a worry that Disney is trying to encompass a monopoly and it would have them open for a bunch of antitrust cases that might come along too. So there's kind of the legal part of that going on. Now, the article notes that neither side has been in active talks but has been up for discussion for several weeks. A deal this large would also have to include the government, so it would be a long, complicated thing, but also a mega thing when you think about Disney being the mega entertainment company and Fox being quite a bit of its own mega house in the world of movies and entertainment. So then later on that day, another report came out, according to Bloomberg, that confirmed the source of CNBC, but also said that the two sides aren't talking anymore. As a result, the deal is pretty much dead as of right now, although it did go on to cite that in Hollywood, deals like this happen all the time and go through processes like this before they become final. It noted a similar situation back when Sony and Marvel were thinking of how they could share Spider-Man. They went through various on and off again stages until finally they reached an, an agreement. And while the talks as of right now are reportedly dead, in Hollywood's past there have been times where deals have been revived again and gone through. So two different reports talking about this huge – deal or potential deal that could have or may still happen in Hollywood. I was at work yesterday when I saw this news come up and my first thought was, holy crap, X-Men's going back to Marvel. Of course, that's that's where my first goes. You know, I do the show, comic book guy, that's first what it is. I don't, I wasn't even thinking about the broadcast network and Fox Sports and all that junk. Wasn't even thinking about that. My first thought was, oh my God, X-Men's going to be with the Avengers. Several other aspects to think about in this is also all the other properties that 20th Century Fox actually owns. You have the Alien franchise, Predators, Planet of the Apes, Kingsman, Die Hard, and even Avatar, which James Cameron is currently working on his four back-to-back -back Avatar sequels and is in close talks with Disney with their new attraction, the Pandora, the world of Avatar, that's at Orlando's Disney World. So you have... A relationship already there between 20th Century Fox and Disney as well as the Star Wars series because 20th Century Fox still owns the rights to the original Star Wars series, not the special edition, the original unspecial editions, so to speak. So there is a relationship that these two have to work out within each other. And then there's a the potential as well to where Disney is starting its own streaming service in 2020, if they can get Fox properties on there as well, I mean, that would be just a huge, huge contender against Netflix in the streaming industry to have all that content. I mean, Disney's already going to have the Disney stuff, the Marvel stuff, the Star Wars stuff. They're already going to compete with Netflix. You throw in 20th Century Fox in there as well and all their material, Netflix might be uh, have a little competition there, to say the least. Okay, so let's stop for a minute, take a breath, go through this one by one and what the potential could be or could have been with it all. Like I said, they said the deal is now dead after several weeks of talks, but you never know. So let me start off by saying Star Wars. 
that's where I'm going to start off with Star Wars. Fox was the original distributor of the Star Wars saga. The first six Star Wars films were done under 20th Century Fox. And they still own the rights to the original Star Wars editions. Now, fans have been clamoring for a while to release the unaltered, unspecial editions of the Star Wars trilogy on Blu-ray. It's what we want to see. That's what I want to see. I'd love to see that. Because right now, when I go through each year and review the Star Wars saga before I watch the newest Star Wars film, like I'm about to do with Last Jedi, I don't watch the Blu-rays. I watch the DVD... Original editions that came out several years ago, oh gosh, maybe what, 10 years ago maybe now? I think whenever Star Wars first came to DVD, they had a pack where you could watch, they had the special editions, and they also had the original editions. And I watched the original editions on DVD, on top of the fact that I watched my own special edits of the prequels. I have my personal edits where I've taken deleted scenes from Episode 2 and Episode 3, added them in there, edited some stuff out of all three of the prequels, and made it more enjoyable for myself, which again is DVD quality. So I own episodes one through six on Blu-ray, and I never watch them because I prefer my own edit of the prequels and the original editions of Star Wars. So if this deal could have, would have gone through, would we have gotten the original Star Wars films on Blu-ray? My guess is no, because... Yes, it's Disney, but it's also Lucasfilm. And according to Kathleen Kennedy and George Lucas, the special editions are official canon of the Star Wars saga, so why, oh why, would they want to release the originals? Maybe there would be some money in it, maybe. But they already re-release the Star Wars saga every year when they release a new Star Wars film. So why would they want to release it again? Especially if it's not part of the actual Star Wars canon. It just, in a money-making sense, is what it really comes down to. And I don't think it would be as profitable for them. Plus, their word. They don't want people focusing on the original unspecial editions. They want people to know and generations to know from now on that the ones that George Lucas made and did in 1997 and beyond are what is Star Wars. So I don't think... We would see the Star Wars Blu-ray come out, even though I think it'd be awesome. Okay, so now let's look at the other side of things, the things that my mind first went to, which is Marvel. Okay, 20th Century Fox owns the rights to the X-Men characters and the Fantastic Four, or to make movies of them for the most part. And then Marvel Studios has the rights to almost all the other characters except for Spider-Man, which is still owned by Sony in the movie sense. Though Sony and Marvel have worked out the deal to where they're sharing Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I think is awesome. Now, the Fantastic Four, as we know, has had a little bit of a rough patch at their home at 20th Century Fox. The last film that came out, was it two years ago? I think it was. It was bad. It was bad. It was critically panned. Um, not good at all. And ever since then, people have screamed for Marvel to take back the Fantastic Four and incorporate them into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For this, I am all about. I agree with it. In the comic books, the Fantastic Four and the Avengers very much team up a lot of the times, work together quite a bit, and have a good relationship to where a lot of the major storylines in the Marvel Cinematic Universe includes the two teams and I think that'd be great. They interact a lot. I like how they go back and forth. I love how in recent interpretations of the Guardians of the Galaxy, you have the Thing, a.k.a. Ben Grimm, as one of the members of the Guardians. I think that'd be something really fun to see, really cool to see. I'm all about it. Plus, I really want to see a good Fantastic Four movie. I enjoyed the first Fantastic Four movie that came out with Chris Evans and Jessica Alba. I have it on Blu-ray. I enjoy it. Not such a fan of the second one, the sequel to it, and of course not a fan of the latest interpretation, but that first one I still do like to watch as of right now the best Fantastic Four film, so I still enjoy it. And in regards to X-Men, I'm on the opposite side. For a while, I always thought that I didn't want Marvel Studios to gain back X-Men because right now the good thing about studios owning different properties is we get more content 
if the X-Men was not 20th Century Fox and they were Marvel Studios, chances are we'd get less X-Men films. Next year, we're looking to get three X-Men films, Deadpool 2, The New Mutants, and X-Men Dark Phoenix. If the X-Men were back at Marvel Studios, I guarantee we'd probably only get one X-Men film next year. But as of right now, we've got three Marvel Studio films, I think, that are coming out, as well as three X-Men films that are coming out on top of all the other superhero content and comic book content that is going to come out through other companies. So by keeping it separate companies, you're going to allow more content out there. And granted, some of it's not great, but as a comic book guy, as a guy who loves sci-fi and fantasy genre, the more the merrier, I say. Now, Fox has been hit or miss with the X-Men franchise in my eyes, although as of late, there have been more hits than misses. Deadpool was great. Logan was great. X-Men Days Future Past is my second favorite comic book film of all time, and I enjoyed X-Men Apocalypse. I know some people had problems with it. I enjoyed it as an X-Men film, and I'm excited for what's to come. New Mutants is probably my least, you know, one I'm interested in. X-Men Dark Phoenix I'm interested in. I know a lot of people aren't based on what X-Men Apocalypse was, but it's still X-Men. I'm still excited about it. And, of course, Deadpool 2. Everyone's excited about that because Deadpool was just so fantastic to watch. And in Marvel Comics, I'm a longtime X-Men reader. And I will tell you that the X-Men have always had their own little pocket of the Marvel Universe. Occasionally, they cross over with the Avengers and the rest of the Marvel Universe. I get that. But there have been a lot of times where it's just X-Men storylines and then the rest of the Marvel Universe. That's why I'm fine with them, 20th Century Fox, still having the X-Men. Versus Fantastic Four where, again, like I said, a lot of Marvel events, Fantastic Four crosses over with the Avengers. Not to say the X-Men never cross over with the other team, but they have a lot going on, have their own little pocket of what they do. So I'm fine with them staying on their own turf. There's enough X-Men characters for Fox to play with to where they don't need a crossover. They don't need to add all these X-Men characters to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I agree, it would be awesome to see Wolverine on the Avengers like he is in the comics, see him battle the Hulk, see him uh, go with Spider-Man on some adventures. It'd be fun, but it's not necessary. So with this deal, 20th Century Fox would be part of Disney. Incorporating them into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm not sure I entirely want. Because, like I said, if we take away 20th Century Fox's ability to make X-Men movies, we're going to get less X-Men movies. And I don't want that. They haven't, in my eyes, produced a bad X-Men film since... I wasn't a fan of First Class, but I will admit it was, you know, okay. So X3 and X-Men Origins. Those are what I consider bad X-Men films. And really the only two bad X-Men films. First Class I'm not a big fan of, but of course Days of Future Past and Beyond I have enjoyed. So for that, they have my faith, they have my trust in what they're doing, and I'm all about it. So I don't want to see them make less X-Men films just so we can see Wolverine on the Avengers. Sorry. Not to say that they would make less X-Men films because Disney owns Lucasfilm and Marvel, and when that happened, we don't see less Marvel Studio films, less Lucasfilm or Star Wars films. So I'm sure 20th Century Fox would still be doing its own thing, but if you incorporate the X-Men into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it gets complicated. It would make X-Men films a little more limited as to what they can do. Now, this is all just theoretical, guys, of course, because according to the report, the deal is dead. Now, it doesn't say officially dead, and they've cited several other past instances in Hollywood to where deals have been on and off again and what's going on there. I don't know. If Disney owns 20th Century Fox, they – I mean they're already the powerhouse. If they start engulfing – other studios, next thing you know, they're going to take up Paramount and they're going to take up Warner Brothers and, whew, man, that would be – there would be nothing else. I mean literally I think there's going to come a day there's going to be Amazon and there's going to be Disney, guys, and that will be it. But until that day, keeping them separate doesn't sound like a bad thing to me. Whether this deal goes through or not, honestly, 
I'm not going to pay attention to it because, like I said, I would love to see Fantastic Four go back to Marvel and be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The X-Men, however, I'm fine where they're at. They're doing some good stuff over there right now. They have my trust. As an X-Men fan, I'm excited for what the future 20th Century Fox has for these characters. As far as the rest of it, this isn't that kind of show. We're going to talk about government deals and broadcasting networks and all that stuff. Here we're focusing on the geek part of it, which is encompassing these characters and Star Wars into Disney. In any event, guys, what do you think? Let me know. Hit me up, dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com, the Facebook group, or on Twitter. Were you excited for this deal? Do you think this deal still could go through? And what potential storylines or things do you want to see happen if this deal were to go through? We're talking fantasy. We're talking what ifs here. Just let me know, guys. Hit me up. Let me know. That's going to be it for me. You can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram, SlimDaySpring12. I'll be back with some new stuff, hopefully tomorrow, if not Thursday. We'll see you then, guys. Until next time, may the Force be with us all.